welcome to the Your Honesty podcast. I am so grateful you wanted to join me for a chat about your honest things. I am Anna, a daytime engineer and a nighttime knit designer and tech editor. Uh, I live in Sweden, uh, close to a town called Linköping. Uh, Linköping is around two hours south of Stockholm. So this is eastern Sweden. Uh, you find me on social media as Yarnesty, and uh, I'm mostly active on Ravelry and Instagram. So that's the safest places to to uh, find me on. On Ravelry, I have a group called Yarnesty's Friends. Uh, there, I put up a thread for each episode where you can chat more about the things I've been mentioning. I will also have links to all the things I mentioned there. Down below here on YouTube, I have um, also put up the links to things I've talked about. During today's episode, I'm going to tell you about some stash enhancement that I've done since last time. And I also have lots of more finished items than I had last time. The main topic today is about wool, whether to, to use superwash or not. And finally, I have some news and events. So let's get started. Uh, I saw that uh, All About Yarn, she had a update uh, on in her Etsy shop. And among that, she had a sock blank that I couldn't resist. It was so beautiful. It's TARDISES. It's so amazing. So it's a little bit gray. Uh, it's gradient from darker here to lighter. So I haven't decided whether I will uh, knit socks from this or I will be knitting a smaller uh, shawl. Uh, we'll see. And. Um, Jenny was so kind to also send me these stitch markers. Aren't they wonderful? Here you see her logotype, all about yarn. Do and the Dalek is so amazing. Just love it. <laughs> yeah, I also happened to see that Coop Knits were about to launch another line of yarn. The same wool content as in her socks, yeah, fingering weight, but this is uh, DK weight instead. And I bought three colors, two greens and uh, one gray. This gray, I will knit uh, socks for my son in. It's really, really lovely gray color. It's... Uh, 75% um, superwash merino and 25% uh, nylon. Among these two uh, things that I bought, I also got a yarn for review from Muta Colors. This is a new line from her. It's uh, oh, look at the colors. Uh, this is my favorite. Um, you always of, uh, often see me knitting in these colors, and this is a silver gray. This is called Shrek Moods. Uh, back to this yarn. It's called Best Wishes from Devon. And this yarn is um, grown in Devon. It's BFL. It's 100% BFL and it is um, also spun in Devon at the uh, Yarn Arbon um, Spinnery Mill, I suppose it's called. <laughs> And uh, then it sh was shipped to Sweden, to West Sweden, in uh, Värmland, um, to be dyed by the super talented Indedaya Mutsa colors. So, um, look at the luster in this yarn. I will come back to this yarn, um, but I want to state that it's totally untreated, no superwash or anything. So it's as natural as it uh, can be. I am most probably last on the ball. But finally I have made myself a pussy hat. 
I made it from yarn that I bought on Edinburgh Yarn Festival. It's a blacker yarn, um, blacker one swan, and it is um, yarn from Falkland Islands uh, Merino. And uh, you don't see the <laughs> the ears, yeah. Um, Poster Hats was uh, a project that started uh, uh, as a symbol for women's rights and they had a big mm, women's march just after um, the recent pre president in the US uh, was installed. Uh, there were awful many uh, hats knit and um, distributed. Uh, for all participants in this march. I also heard that during the science march uh, last month there were people uh, knitting up this uh, hat in different, all different kind of colors. So this has, this hat has not only been uh, tre uh, looked upon as a woman, women's right uh, symbol, it's also a symbol for equality for everyone, for all people. Uh, it's a color that uh, I like it quite a lot. It's a little more sa salmon color than, uh, it's not so super shiny pink. Now, uh, yeah, actually I have another finished object in pink. Pink isn't the color I use so often, but here are a pair of socks. Uh, it is um, Helen Stewart's apple blossom socks. I call these socks cherry blossom socks because I think they look so fantastic. Uh, just the color that the cherry blossom have in the spring. There are quite a lot uh, of uh, cherry blossoms around here. Um, I think it started maybe in uh, Stockholm. They planted cherry blossoms in Kungsträdgården in the King's Garden, close to the Stockholm Center. And um, people go there everywhere, every, every spring to look at the fantastic trees. They have two alleys on each side of the square. And um, yeah, people go there, take their selfies and it's so beautiful. And we have actually in our town or in our village where I live, we have a lot, uh, quite a few of cherry blossom in a roundabout. So if you look at this picture that I soon will be putting up, I um, and you try to s figure out how I did this picture. I was alone taking the picture. So yeah, I did lie on my back in a roundabout in the middle of the village <laughs> and taking the picture of my feet uh, stretched out to the to the sky and up to the cherry trees but it is a lovely picture isn't it it was totally worth it i'm not much of a monogamous knitter but uh, i wanted really to finish the butterfly friendship shawl and now you see it it's all blocked finished. I finished it uh, a couple of days ago and last night I blocked it. I will uh, take it off to show you more. And um, here it is. It's quite a difference. I have uh, blocked it quite brutal. <laughs> So, uh, because I wanted it to be a big shawl. I knit it um, with a rather loose gauge. I'm a super tight knitter. So normally if you if you use four millimeter needles for your shawls, I, I need four and a half millimeter needles. The yarn I used was another fantastic yarn from Mutsu Colors. It's called Pure Essence of Falklands. It is a um, untreated yarn, and it um, it's all merino sheep from um, 
from Falklands. It has a bit of a halo, the fabric very soft and I think it will be a very warm shawl to wear. At the same time it's it's uh, not so dense. But I think it will be perfect. I love big shawls and uh, this half, so half, half circle shape is one of my favorites where you uh, increase four stitches per every second round like this. And this pattern is available on Ravelry uh, in my Ravelry shop only in English. As soon as I bound off the butterfly friendship shawl I had my four and a half millimeter needles uh, free so I could uh, cast on a new shawl and the shawl I sh chose was the uh, Fairy Hill shawl by Helen Stewart. Uh, my favorite designer, uh, host of the Curious Handmade podcast, and uh, uh, yeah, a really an awesome uh, shawl designer, shawl and sock designer. So here's the start. Uh, I have reached the 40% um, point, and I have uh, I think 12 rows left uh, to. It's a beautiful simple lace pattern here uh, 12 rows left and then I will begin with the second color which is this the Shrek color and I think this is forest moods and the you light, lighter one is Shrek it would be lovely um, I skipped the beads I <laughs> I think it took too, too, too long time to add the beads I didn't ha I don't have um, enough I, I'm more in a hurry when I knit. I want it to be finished. So no beading for me this time either. Sometime maybe in the future, not now. Yeah, and the next thing I want to um, cast on is a pair of socks for my son in the, in the socks here, yeah, DK weight. So that will be my to go knitting because now the Fairy Hill shawl is a bit too, beginning to be a little bit too large and uh, I have to count uh, the the lace repeat comes uh, more quick uh, more often now and so uh, I have to think a bit when I knit so um, a plain vanilla sock is always lovely and so the pattern I will be using is Cluet sports socks that was my first design on Ravelry, so I will pick this up and uh, rewrite it and do a tech edit on it so it uh, will have the same high quality as the other on my patterns. Over to today's theme. I'm sure that most knitters uh, that love wool know that wool is much more nature friendly or environmental friendly than, for example, polar fleeces. Polar fleece is a really, really thin fiber. As far as I have um, read, it's about 10 micron, micrometers each fiber. As for wool, can be down to 15, maybe the very thinnest merino wool or the finest merino wools I've seen is about 15 or 16 micros. And then it's up to when it goes up over 30, 35, it can be prickly on the skin if you are sensitive. Back to polar fleece. So when you, or in Sweden the polar fleece is called uh, only fleece. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, the Swedish word for pol polar fleece is fleece. Yeah, I know that uh, fleece in, in um, English is what you have on the the sheep, the actual sheep. The reason why I try to avoid polar fleece is that when we wash the polar fleece, small small parts of the uh, of the plastic washes out with the water from the washing machine, and uh, these 
these parts of uh, plastic are not small, big enough to get caught in the in the treatment plants. That's why it ends up in the sea and uh, it gets uh, in the fish and we eat it. So it's best if the plastic doesn't come out in the sea, of course. Uh, it takes really, really long time before the the plastic is um, broken down by the ne by by the environment. Wool, on the other hand, if that breaks from the fabric and uh, comes out in the environment, it is uh, natural. You can it can be broken down much more easily than the plastic can. Of course. Nothing is black or white. Some yarns does contain plastic or has been treated with uh, un environmental, not so friendly um, things. And that, uh, especially with, when we talk about superwash yarn, there are some treatment that is not so environmental friendly. So, when, uh, why? Is a superwash. What's the difference between a superwash and a non-superwash yarn? Um, most of you probably know, but yarn uh, contains scales, the same thing that at, uh, as our hairs do. So it scales on on the on the fiber, and these scales, if they come together, they get stuck together, and uh, the fabric get felted. Uh, so and that happens when you wash it in the machine so it's the higher the temperature the more you get the fabric against each other and um, there are other things as well that uh, makes a wool felt yeah what kind of uh, it depends on which detergent you use some detergents are more easily to make the wool felt than others so uh, there are some machines does have a wool cycle depends it's more like a cradle <laughs> so it just gets it doesn't turn around so much or um, when I wash wool I usually just put it in a, uh, in a sink let it be there for a quarter of an hour and then change the water and and uh, I think it's clean enough to use again. Wool doesn't need to be uh, washed at, as often as other uh, fabrics like um, cotton or, or microfiber or something like that. Yeah, that was why a wool fiber can felt and many people want to have a superwash yarn so they can wash their wool woolen things in the in the uh, washing machine so to create the wool a washable item or a washable fiber you start with the traditional way at least is to put the yarn or the fiber in a chloride solution and that makes some of the scales remo be removed and then after that uh, you coat the fiber with uh, some kind of polymer and uh, yeah it's in practicality it's, it's uh, plastic so that coating makes it um, more difficult for the fiber to felt so then you have a superwash wool that you can wash in the machine. Well, of course there are more friendly, environmental friendly ways of um, making something superwash. I have read uh, that the label Ecotex 100 should make be better for the environment but uh, as far as I have been able to Google that, is that um, the Ecotex is more of a 
end product labeling so when it's labeled Ecotex 100 it says they no, they're not so much uh, chemicals in the end product so it doesn't say anything how it was treated before it's just like they're not any more more it's not more chemicals in the product than it's needed to be and it's good for uh, people who are allergic to things so that's good label but not for the environmental um, on the other hand there's a label called GOTS GOTS so that's a label that says how the workers are treated uh, what kind of um, chemicals are you using in the plants and when you uh, dye it or when you wash it everything and the whole, whole process from uh, the first if you're talking about wool it's how the uh, sheep are treated and how uh, they are shred and how how they are spun, are washed and spun and dyed and handled, everything in between. So, uh, according to my source, uh, which is a British fiber and a bit, uh, entrepreneur, you can still use plastic of the wool and get it got certified. You're not allowed, on the other hand, to use uh, chlorine or bleach uh, during the process so at least that is eliminated so uh, these plastics still uh, are handled uh, if you have that on the on the yarn it still gets out in the environment but not at, as much as if it's uh, handled in the, the traditional superwash way so to end with if you want to have a um, yarn that is as environmental friendly as possible the best thing is to have a yarn that is not treated at all only washed um, under controlled circumstances and then um, just spun and uh, dyed of course also in a controlled way so you don't have a waste um, products in the in the water when you when during the dyeing process if you do have un untreated wool remember do wash them by hand <laughs> right even though I have uh, knowledge about these things and uh, how to treat the environment uh, the environment as good as possible I'm no hero. <laughs> I do have the superwash wool in my stash, and some of the my favorite yarns are superwash. So uh, I think uh, I wanted to show you some of the yarns that I have that are superwash. Uh, a yarn that I love to use at knitting shawls is the I only have it caked, so it's a. Uh, Malab de Gosok. It's amazing to knit shorts with. It's so super fast, and you can see maybe if you look at it closely. That is um, a yarn that doesn't have so much halo. It's it's quite. It's very round, and um, yeah, it goes super quickly to knit with. And they are. This is a a greeny gray color a dark gray and um, I knit several shawls with this one <laughs> and uh, they are hand dyed in um, South America I say um, I put in uh, in the links where it comes from which country in South America it's a uh, I think it's a collective where people are well treated yeah um another very popular yarn for socks are the regia and here i have a regia perfect um so these are the way you can knit to 
uh, to socks that are twins and not siblings something I like uh, it's you can knit uh, you can um, wash this in the machine so uh, it's it says the label oh it's too light but on the label it says that it's machine washable uh, a British yarn I have is um, the lovely West Yorkshire Spinners. It's a difficult word to say. It's from West Yorkshire. And this is also, as far as I have uh, read on their website, it is um, uh, Superwash. It contains some BFL. And the, uh, the yarn I showed you earlier, the Kuknitz, it's also superwash, merino. It is really extra soft. If you uh, th think that wool are a bit prickly when you use them, the, um, the superwash treated yarns is less prickly, as there are no scales on it, of course. And, um, and as I said earlier, also the uh, quicker to knit with because of the plastic coat coating. I have some uh, GOTS GOTS uh, labeled yarns in my stash. Most of them are either Cheeky Marina Joy from Rose Green Wool, a yarn that is using the same base as Cheeky Marina Joy is the talented Swedish uh, dyer Dan dandelion yarns that you saw maybe on the um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival if you were there. They are as user friendly as you can get with a superwash yarn. So this is a really good alternative. Uh, this yarn is a sport weight. Um, she does these so amazing colors. Uh, and I think they will be available for you, of you, those of you who live in London, because the London shop, the Loop Islington, will be uh, uh, do, selling her, her yarn soon, the dandelion yarn. I do have some untreated yarn. As I mentioned earlier, I have uh, three yarns from Utsu Colors that are totally untreated. That is... The Pure Essence of Falklands that I knit my butterfly friendship shawl in. It is also the, this I don't have a label, but this is the yarn I used for the socks. And this is Humble Regard from Devon. So this is a sock yarn uh, with the same fiber content as the Best Wishes from Devon. The difference is that this yarn has 25% uh, nylon in it for strength. So, um, best wishes from De Devon is uh, regarded to be a yarn for shawls, and this is for socks. You can use it for both. I, th I think I will try to do a pair of socks at some time uh, of this yarn, um, the hundred percent BFL yarn at some time. The yarn that I have had my eyes on even since the, it was released, over, I think it was over one year ago, is the um, Whistle Bear's Catbird Socks. And that yarn is uh, untreated. And uh, you see the luster. It contain it is uh, spun uh, from mo their own, the mohair um, goats. They have on the farm Whistlebear, and they also have Wensleydales, a sheep that they blend with this. So no nylon in these socks, in this sock yarn at all. It's a little bit thicker yarn. At least it's a little bit heavier, probably because of the mohair. Mohair is perfect for for socks. The it's really. They are long and uh, very, the hairs is very st strong. 
so um, it's supposed to not break as, as easily. Maybe I should try this for, for my son. Hmm, would be good. <laughs> He's the best try for, for socks that are durable. Yeah, so uh, this is a really good alternative if you want to uh, knit socks with no nylon in. I find it quite difficult to find commercial yarns that are non-treated uh, or untreated. So I have only heard about one yarn that soon will be available at Markery 14. Markery 14 is a shop in the old town of Stockholm. And she also have a webshop. I will put a link down there. It's not available yet, but I hope it will be soon. The yarn was called Re Retrosaria Mondim. Retrosaria Mondim. And that is a three ply yarn spun from 100% Portuguese uh, wool. That is actually the only commercial sock yarn that I've heard of that is not treated with superwash. So if you know any other, do drop me a line and we can we can collect them in a, and talk about them later. That would be awesome. Over to news and events. So um, the uh, Yarnesty Spring Cow, even though it's almost summer today, in the, the weather is uh, really, really hot in Sweden today. We have, uh, I think, 30 degrees. Um, it's still, I, I still consider it spring. It's May. And uh, the Yarnest uh, Spring Cal will be going on f until the 6th of June, which is the Sweden's National Day. Uh, I have um, uh, bind off the Butterfly Friendship Shore, but I have another yarn, uh, I have another project on my needles and that is um, another shawl the uh, Björke shawl or birch tree shawl it's a garter -strick stitch shawl and it is um, a uh, asymmetric sin uh, asymmetric uh, triangular shawl with some uh, garter stitch uh, lace in between and a gutter stitch. Um, also, I'm knitting this in a very special uh, dye. I think it's called Julefried um, Christmas Tide. I'm knitting this one in um, in a yarn from uh, Limo Design. It's her sock yarn, and this yarn was uh, the. Um, Christmas it was in the advent calendar so this was the, on the Christmas Eve then we got this yarn uh, it's really really nice it's this this is a it's a red and gray green I think it will be nice look nice in this uh, shawl uh, Limo design uh, I have made um, many patterns together with Limo design I don't remember how many, but it's quite a few, at least four socks and one shawl. And um, she's actually um, translating her uh, webshop at the moment. So uh, after a while, uh, you will be able to see the see all the text in English. It makes you easier. It makes it, it makes it quite easier for you that talks English that talk English to. Uh, visitor shop and um, as soon as this is over uh, I will uh, myself be joining uh, Yarniac's podcast it's uh, two girls Gail and Charlene they live in California and they always host two girls knit alongs every year one is the self indulgent knit along which is in the beginning of the year and during the third quarter, they always uh, host the, um, they have done for four years now. It's called Yarniac's Colors of Fall Knit Along. And in that, you look at the 
um, the color cards from Pantone the fall colors to, uh, this year is two uh, actually two cards one for the um, the New York Fashion Week and one for London Fashion Week my favorite is the New York Fashion Week uh, they are more like a little bit stronger colors and the uh, London Fashion Weeks are a little bit uh, softer colors and I like strong colors uh, yeah and uh, I I'm not sure what I'm gonna knit but I know that I have two sock yarns from Coop Knits in my stash that are perfectly for the teal and the light grey. So these two together I will probably create a, a pair of socks in. So um, that would be really, really nice. And I will find myself probably knitting more. The thing with this Colors of Fall knit along is that you, you're supposed to be prepared for the fall it starts at the summer solace and it ends with the uh, eastern equinox is called that yeah um, so uh, when the fall comes you prepared with the correct uh, uh, yeah with the correct colors and to be participating with the price to win prizes you're supposed to make uh, like uh, you put all your clothes together with something you already have in your wardrobe and you get a yeah you do have outfit so either you can put it that on a, a dummy or put them out on your bed or you can you can dress yourself and do a, a picture of yourself and uh, post in the finished objects thread and uh, in the Arniax podcast um, Ravelry group and it's so lovely to see all these pictures. Yeah, it's the um, most fun of it all. And be talking about the colors. And yeah, it's a really popular pe popular uh, knit along. And I will be on. I have been joining it for three years now. I think it's been my fourth year in this knit along. I've been listening for to them for quite a while. One of the audio podcasts that I seldom miss. And. Uh, during the last episode I suppose you maybe saw me working on my new sock design Willem und Kaleb's Dotter and that design is now out on Ravelry so that's uh, I'm so grateful for all and everyone that has um, bought that pattern already for those of you who watch this podcast I have a small um, coupon ready for you the coupon code is Villemopod we'll see it here in text and the pattern is available on Ravelry only in English uh, quite soon I will try to get out a abbreviation list translated to Swedish um, the pattern will not be available in Swedish in any time soon I'm afraid I write all my pattern in English and uh, only if someone th threatens me with something really bad I translate them to Swedish. The Villa Mukolib Sotter socks were photographed by the lovely and talented photographer and blogger and podcaster and writer um, Pia Kammerborn. I send them over to Gotland and uh, they're still there. So that's why you knew now we'll see some photographs from that shoot. I think that Pia has captured the, the feeling of Willemo really, really lovely. Willemo was a character in the, uh, in the legend of the ice people. And she was born late 17th century. Uh, she was quite a wild child and um, even more wild as a teenager she was not cursed uh, as many of the other people in her in the in the saga in this saga is uh, it's that is fantasy and saga mixed up she was um, really warm-hearted 
and wild and did things without thinking first uh, but she always got out of it either by her, or by her own powers or by help from her friends or family so I think um, uh, Vilmos and she was red haired and her t- she was really tempered as well as many red haired are yeah, I think uh, these um, this simple cable pattern together with the the twisted rib captures a bit about her personality. I hope you will be having a really really nice time until we meet next time, and um, I will definitely go out in the sun now and uh, enjoy the short Swedish summer. We never know when it will be warm again in this country. So um, I wish you a lovely day and uh, I hope we will be seeing each other soon. Bye!